Hello everyone, this is the imperishable Sammy Zenith, and in this video I'm going to be talking about Ultra Instinct because I feel that Ultra Instinct is a very interesting ability slash power-up slash transformation. And perhaps one of my favorite things from the modern era of Dragon Ball to talk about. So, in particular, I'm going to be talking about the higher grades of Ultra Instinct that Whis mentioned in the latest chapter of Dragon Ball Super. I'm very intrigued as to what these higher levels of Ultra Instinct might be, whether it's simply getting stronger in the state of Ultra Instinct, which I think is a distinct possibility. Especially when it comes to Saiyans, because Saiyans have infinite potential. So regardless of what their most powerful transformation is, there's always room for growth. But I have a feeling it might go a little deeper than that, and I have a theory as to what the higher grades of Ultra Instinct might be. So in a past video... I talked about sort of the dynamics of Ultra Instinct, or that is what I thought they might have been at the time. And back then, uh, I jokingly said that Ultra Instinct was powered by ketones. You have to keep in mind that was, that was not intended to be taken seriously. I don't think I, like, uh, made anyone upset when I said that. I was just joking about that because Martin Cabello 3 was sort of this internet sensation that I was obsessed with at the time, so I like to joke about ketones a lot in general because that's sort of Martin Cabello's thing, the ketones. But anyways, that was a bit meta. Um, I did mention at the time that I don't think Ultra Instinct is necessarily a godly technique. I didn't think it was necessarily powered by God Key. But as the finale of the Moro Saga revealed, that is actually not the case at all. Ultra Instinct is very much a godly technique. When the Z Fighters tried to send a lot of regular energy into Goku in order to power up and power him up back into perfected Ultra Instinct, that did not work. But when Oob sent a lot of godly energy towards uh, Goku's uh, direction, and Goku absorbed it, he not only went into Ultra Instinct, but he was able to use a gigantification technique that allowed him to easily finish off... Um, planet Eater Moro. So I guess the mystery as to why Master Roshi couldn't um, utilize the actual technique of Ultra Instinct has finally been solved because Master Roshi was certainly moving without thinking, but he simply didn't have what it takes in terms of the training with divine energy. If Master Roshi had that up his, um, if he had that training up his belt, then who knows, maybe he could access Ultra Instinct aside from, you know, the thing about requiring an empty heart, which Master Roshi obviously doesn't have. He's, uh, kind of a pervert, so that would probably obstruct Ultra Instinct a bit since it seemingly requires a pure heart, or at least a calm heart, like Goku has or the angels have. But I think that's pretty much the same thing as a pure heart. But anyways, since Goku has Ultra Instinct um, at his commands, like he can use it anytime he wants, and the complete version of it, mind you, not just sign. Yet, despite this, his Ultra Instinct is, according to his own words, bottom of the, la <laughs> bottom of the ladder, and the Ultra Instinct that the Angels have and the Grand Priest has, especially in comparison, far dwarf that 
Ultra Instinct ability that Goku has. Sorry, I feel like that wasn't good grammar. Uh, by far, they dwarf the ability that Goku has in Ultra Instinct. Let's go with that. So, how can Goku improve Ultra Instinct? Well, in my opinion, it ultimately comes down to refining the key that he's able to use in his Ultra Instinct transformation. According to an interview that Toriyama did, there are different components of key. And godly key is basically just regular key, but more refined and um, condensed. One of the components is Genki, which you might be familiar with. It's the life energy that powers a spirit bomb, but it goes deeper than that. Genki is a critical component of all forms of energy that Goku and the others use in Dragon Ball. It's basically the essence of Ki that gives it power. But there are two other components. There's Yuki and Shoki, which sort of act as like buffers to Genki. They sort of stabilize it. Which is why Genki in its st distilled form is so powerful. Because I mean... When you actually think about it, the spirit bomb remains a relevant technique to this day, despite the characters having entered godly realms of power. You would think, despite everything else they have up their arsenal now, like, you know, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, that the spirit bomb would pretty much be rendered useless by now, but that's not the case. Clearly, because Trunks used an ability not identical to the Spirit Bomb, but very similar to it in order to finish off Merge Zamasu. And Goku still considered the Spirit Bomb his ace in the whole technique during the Tournament of Power, and he tried that against Jiren when even Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken failed. I would say the only technique greater than the Spirit Bomb is Ultra Instinct itself. So, yeah, Genki is a pretty powerful component of Ki, but the other components of Ki that I mentioned, Yuki and Shoki, are still very important in allowing someone to fight at their full potential. Yuki is essentially translates to bravery, and Shoki essentially translates to being in one's right mind. So let's think about how this might, um, let's think about how these, uh, forms of Ki might manifest into Ultra Instinct. In the case of Yuki, I think Goku is a very brave person in general. Generally, he's very confident in his own abilities, not too overconfident. Whis even said that Goku, like, drops his guard a lot. And he still does that to, his, to this very day. He hasn't fully learned his lesson. But despite this, I think Goku is a very brave person. That's why many people see him as a hero, just because of how positive Goku is always, and he's always hopeful that either he can get the job done or somebody else can, such as Gohan or Vegeta or someone like that, which rarely ever happens, but <laughs> still. So I don't necessarily think that this is something that Goku struggles with, but he might still have room for improvement. Not as much so as other characters like, I don't know, Krillin for instance, because, I mean, you know, in comparison to Goku, a lot of other characters act cowardly. Which is what I think makes Goku such a great protagonist in the first place. But anyways, 
Next, let's talk about Shoki. I don't think Shoki, as in being in one's right mind, is something that Goku has down at all. I mean, this is pretty much proven uh, near the climax of the Moro Saga when Goku offers Moro Sensu Bean, despite Moro pretty much being the embodiment of evil. Goku knows this. The moment he met, he, the moment he met Moro, he knew this guy was pure evil. Like he literally sensed thousands of lives crying in agony within Moro. That pretty much established from the get-go that Moro is not a good guy. He will never be a good guy. He's quite possibly the worst of the worst. So, I, I mentioned this in a previous video. Goku giving a senzu bean to Moro. I don't know if he, uh, he was in his right mind when he did that, because from my perspective and... Based on another YouTuber's specula speculation named Revolution, he came up with the theory that Ultra Instinct, at least Ultra Instinct Goku, does in fact have a weakness, and that appears in the form of Goku pretty much reverting back to his old ways, so to speak. Which would be, you know, showing mercy to everyone despite how evil they are. Goku's learned this lesson in the past. He shouldn't have to learn it again. So maybe Ultra Instinct flips some sort of switch in Goku's mind that makes him a bit more impulsive and less rational. I still think that's a possibility. But who really knows? Uh, just... Nevertheless, I think the Shoki aspect of Ki is definitely an area that Goku needs to work on. And lastly, Genki. I know that Goku has no knowledge of the spirit bomb and spirit control, as in balance of mind, body, and spirit. But despite understanding these things, I don't think Goku necessarily would be as proficient at manipulating Genki as, say, an angelic being would, would be. Because, like I said earlier in the video, Genki is pretty much the facet of Ki that gives it power. It's pretty much vital energy, whereas I would say Yuki and Shoki are more so like mental barriers. I think Genki is a physical barrier. Almost. In fact, I have a, the I have a feeling that if my theory about the higher grades of Ultra Instinct being tied to the different parts of Ki, I have a feeling if if my theory has some weight to it, then Genki will probably be the toughest hurdle to overcome because Goku is simply nowhere near the Angel's level in terms of strength. Angels are not only immortal and no Ultra Instincts at birth, or at least that's what has been implied. Like Beerus said in the newest Dragon Ball Super chapter that Whis is simply in ult the Ultra Instinct state all the time. Like, effortlessly. He doesn't need a transformation for it like Saiyan seemingly do. So, I, I think considering that a angels are immortal and just have Ultra Instinct innately... I don't know. I don't know if Goku will ever be as strong as Whis. Or the Grand Priest, let alone Whis. I just don't think it'll happen. Goku's only in his mid-40s. And Saiyans only live to be, like... 
I I would I would assume like 200 years at best. So unless Goku like wishes for immortality or something, I just I I don't know. I don't think Goku will ever be that strong. But I think just gradually fine tuning Ultra Instinct and the other grades that I mentioned, you know, the bravery aspect of Ultra Instinct and the sober mindedness um, aspect of Ultra Instinct. By that, I mean, I, I don't mean sober as in, like, you know, obviously Goku doesn't drink. I'm saying, like, right mindedness basically. You know, because I, I think Goku acts immature a lot. And even the bravery aspect of Ultra Instinct, even Goku gets surprised at times. Like, when Moro became, uh, like, one with planet Earth. I, I don't know you if you guys saw the cliffhanger for that chapter, but Goku was pretty surprised. Like, he was, he was shocked. And even recently when he was training with Whis, before Whis KO'd him, he he had this, like, surprise expression on, the, on his face. So, like, clearly Ultra Instinct doesn't cancel out emotions. It's, it's, it's caused by a shock to one's emotions, but it's still possible to emote while you're in Ultra Instinct. And, and not just Goku, I, even the angels seem perfectly capable of having a wide range of emotions despite being an Ultra Instinct all the time. I mean, angels are usually pretty level-headed, but, like, for example, Whis often gets excited about, like, food a lot, and <laughs> I don't know if you remember the one time that he, uh, stepped in, like, Dr. Slump poop, you know, the pink poop that appears in Dr. Slump a lot. <laughs> Clearly, he was pretty grossed out by that. I, I My point is that, you know, I think fine-tuning Ultra Instinct and overcoming some of the mental barriers won't necessarily entail, like, completely discarding emotions, because I, I don't think... I don't think that's necessary for utilizing Ultra Instinct. So I, I talked about what the higher grades of Ultra Instinct might be, as in mastering Shoki, mastering Yuki, mastering Genki, and what would come last? What would be the ultimate goal in terms of truly mastering Ultra Instinct? Because... People call the silver-haired form of Ultra Instinct mastered a lot, which I, I've said this before. That's simply that's simply false. Just because Goku can use the complete version of Ultra Instinct, as in dodging and attacking without thinking, that doesn't mean it's mastered. You know, like clearly. The version in the term of power was far from mastered, considering each time he used it was by accident. And even now that he can use Ultra Instinct completed whenever he wants, he's he's probably still weaker than Beerus. Like Beerus could probably still beat him in a fight just because of the power difference between the two. That was sort of a debate for a while. Honestly, even I was in the camp that thought Ultra Instinct Goku was superior to Beerus. But in light of recent information, particularly Beerus's reaction to Planet Moro saying that he could finish off Planet Moro quickly, I'm pretty sure Beerus's. I'm pretty sure that was meant to suggest, at least as far as the manga continuity goes, Beerus is still more powerful than even perfected Ultra Instinct Goku. That That is just my observation anyways. But anywho, I think the ultimate goal that Goku would be striving for in Ultra Instinct would probably be 
using Ultra Instinct in base form. Or, or just simply being able to use Ultra Instinct, the technique of it, in any of his forms. Like, if he's a true master of Ultra Instinct, then he shouldn't have... He, he shouldn't only be able to access it in a specific transformation. He should be able to use it in base, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 3, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue... Really, any of his transformations. But in order to do this, I think Goku would have to find a way to use God Key in base form, which he was apparently able to do in the Revival of Frieza movie, but I think that's since been retconned. I think that's been retconned to mean Goku was simply as strong as Battle of Gods Super Saiyan God Goku. Um just in his base form. Which, I guess that makes sense, too, because, you know, having God Key doesn't automatically make you, like, superior with superior to anyone with regular Key, as shown by the likes of Gohan, Android 17, Hit, Jiren, and I can, and I can go on with that. So, it, it, so I think the Saiyan Beyond God thing is just a common misconception. It's Goku using regular key, but he's as he's still as strong as he was in Battle of Gods. But I think if he wants to use Ultra Instinct in base or any of his other Super Saiyan transformations, then he would have to find a way to access God Key in base and from there incorporate Ultra Instinct. And he would probably have to come overcome all the other mental and physical barriers to using his key more effectively than I mentioned. So that's my theory about the higher grades of Ultra Instinct. Again, it might not be that. It might not be, you know, the uh, Genki, Yuki, Shoki thing. It might just be simply getting stronger in Ultra Instinct. Because, I mean, this is Dragon Ball. Like, we... We tend to overthink, overthink things when it's really a lot simpler uh, than it is complicated. Now, as for the alternative path that Vegeta is supposedly learning from Beerus, that supposedly still puts Beerus above Goku, mind you, as for what that technique might be, I, I haven't a clue, but I'm... Guessing, I'm just guessing that it's another high-speed technique like Ultra Instinct. As in, I think it's a technique that would not necessarily increase Vegeta's power, but rather his speed. Because I think even way back in Dragon Ball Z, the characters realized that speed is more important than power. Like, you shouldn't sacrifice... Um, speed for power. That's why, you know, Super Saiyan Grade 3 was virtually useless. So if anything, you want to be doing the opposite, which is why I think maybe, just maybe, whatever Vegeta's learning will somehow be related to the technique that, I know it sounds random, but the technique that Dispo used in the term of power, or just in the anime version, but it was like it was like the super light speed mode or the super turbo speed mode depending on the trans uh the translation but basically it was a technique that di that dramatically enhanced dispo speed because despite being despite having the reputation of being like the fastest warrior in universe 11 universe 11 he was still slower than the likes of Golden Frieza, and I would assume also Jiren. But when he tapped into Super Light Speed Mode, he was faster than Golden Frieza and gave both Golden Frieza and Ultimate Gohan a hard time. And I would argue that he was possibly strong, uh, I mean possibly faster than um, Jiren. I, 
I didn't say stronger, I said faster. So in the case of a god of destruction, when you reach a certain level of power, a certain plane of power to where you can destroy planets with a flick of your finger, having a technique that simply increases your power, your power level isn't necessarily that useful. Which is why some of them try to learn Ultra Instinct and struggle to do so, but I think whatever that alternative to Ultra Instinct is, is it's got to be like another high-speed technique. I think that would be far more useful for a God of Destruction than, you know, some sort of power-enhancing technique, basically. And I think if Vegeta learns that, he would be a contender for Ultra Instinct Goku. I don't, again, I don't necessarily know what this technique would be like. Because this is just, this is just a hypothesis, you know. I'm sure whatever the writers, as in Toriyama slash Toriotaro, come up with will be far more creative because they're the creative masterminds behind the series. They, they can come up with ideas for the series that are way more effective than fans ever could because they have full creative control over it. But anyways, yeah, who knows what this technique would be. I, I just thought of Dispo because, I mean, he looks similar to Beerus. I, I, I don't know. He might be from like, he might have he might have descended from a similar race of beings to Beerus and Champa. Probably not the exact same race because Dispo, you know, he has, he looks more like a bunny while Beerus and Champa look like cats. But their similarities are definitely worth noting. I mean, even Champa and Vados acknowledged it. So who knows what, maybe like Dispo... And Beerus' um, species have, like, some sort of aptitude for God of Destruction energy, God of Destruction training. Clearly, Dispo isn't... Clearly, Dispo isn't, like, a God of Destruction or a God of Destruction trainee, but... I'm just saying, maybe his race has an affinity to it. I mean, even if you look at Dispo and the aura that's surrounding him in super light speed mode, it's a lot like that of a Hakaishin's. So yeah, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. Let me know what you thought about my theory of what the higher grades of Ultra Instinct might be and what Vegeta's new ability that he might, that he's working towards could be. Um, let me know. And hopefully the manga delivers on that sooner than later. I definitely hope the Granola the Survivor arc has better pacing than the Moral Saga because the latter felt really drawn out at times. But I have, I have a good feeling about the Granola the Survivor arc. Granola is definitely a unique sort of villain. And I thought that too about Moro at first, but Moro's personality was a bit lacking it was a bit derivative of like King Piccolo while Granola you know he's definitely being set up as like a villain he's definitely going to be an antagonist in some way but he's he's already like an antagonist that you can sympathize with <laughs> and it's funny that he already has a better backstory than Jiren because if you think about it, Jiren also had a tragic backstory with like all his friends and family dying. But Jiren's backstory was like just a lot more unoriginal. And I think Granola, we feel more of a connection with him because we know that it was the Saiyans that terrorized him. And from the looks of it, it appears to be Bardock who invaded the planet of the Cerulean's in the past. So that might come back to bite Goku because if Granola by some chance knows what Bardock looks like in his humanoid form, then yeah, Granola's going to be pissed at Goku. <laughs> but anywho, 
Granola Saga is shaping up to be pretty good. Curious as to how he might surpass Ultra Instinct because that seems to be what they're setting up. I don't know how he's going to pull that off though because he seems pretty weak. Like, I don't know if he's even stronger than like uh, Saiyan Saga Goku at this point. So, I don't know. It, it's definitely interesting and um again let me know what your thoughts are in the comments also guys i'm still doing the end of video squad um thing that wasn't just a one-time thing uh i want to do that in all my videos now so if you have a comment that you want me to respond to in one of my videos just leave the ha just drop the hashtag end of video squad but that would be really cool, and it lets me know that you guys are watching till the end of the video, because that is important to me. I, I think it's important to anyone who's a maker of YouTube videos that they want people to, you know, watch their videos all the way through. So, just leave a comment with that hashtag, of course, and I'm going to be responding now to a comment that I've selected from the previous video that I did, which was the game pitch about a Pac-Man World Remastered Trilogy. And this person actually did leave the hashtag end of video squad, and they go by the name Aaron J. So let's read his comment. He says, I've actually never heard of the 3D Pac-Man games before, so I'll definitely check them out. I agree that Super Mario 3D All-Stars is way overpriced. You can get more modern games on the Switch, such as the complete Bioshock collection for cheaper than All-Stars. I actually did not know that uh, the Bioshock collection was on the Nintendo Switch. Maybe, uh, maybe that's not what, that, maybe that's not what you meant to say, but, um, if that's the case, I was not aware of that. That's actually, um, really cool if it is. Um, if Bioshock is on Switch, I'll have to check that out sometime, because I've been meaning to try those games. I, I tried it a little bit on the PS4, like, um, one of the older Bioshock games, but I didn't get very far in, into it. Uh, I don't know, maybe I could give it, like, uh, another, another, um, try, I suppose. But, um, yeah, as, as like you were saying, um, yeah, 3D Mar- uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, um, I don't know. I, I think, considering that they didn't, they clearly didn't put that much effort into it, it shouldn't have been- a $60 um, game. If anything, it should have been like maybe $30 to $40 at most. Um, but it is what it is. I still ended up buying it. Um, and I enjoyed it. I just, I know, couldn't help but think like, hey, wouldn't, have been, wouldn't it have been better if they completely remade these games? Um, but, oh well. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think if they make a Pac-Man World Remastered Trilogy, they should definitely, like, do full-fledged remakes of those games. I think they definitely deserve that sort of treatment. Um, and yeah, definitely if you can give the Pac-Man World series uh, a try, I... I, I do not think you'll regret it if you are into 3D platformers in general from that time period. But anyways, um, I'm going to conclude the video here. Th thank you all so much for watching. And uh, subscribe for more videos. Um, I would love to make more Dragon Ball related videos. I, I'm very passionate about Dragon Ball. Um, it, 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 it's just a shame that not many people watch these videos, um, especially the ones about Dragon Ball, 
because it's something I'm so passionate about. Um, not saying it's anyone's fault for not watching my videos. If anything, it's my fault. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, still, I, 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 I feel like sometimes when I see the low view counts on, like, my Dragon Ball related videos, it kind of discourages me from making them, but I'm gonna, I'm still gonna continue to make them anyways, because I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball, so, um, I'll talk about it regardless, and I know there are still some people who watch these videos, um, but yeah, this, this video has definitely gone on long enough, um, and if you watch till the end, I, you, you have my gratitude. Anyways, um, goodbye.